Hey everybody, Fred Minnick here, and happy Bourbon Declaration Day. That's right, on May 4th, 1964, this day, Congress declared bourbon to be a unique product of the United States. And really, this should be the National Bourbon Day and not that fake holiday on June 14th. So how about it for Congress in 1964? Now, I wrote a lot about this in my book, Bourbon, the Rise, Fall, and Rebirth of American Whiskey. This is actually one of the things I have spent a lot of time researching in, in the bourbon world, and that is just exactly why and how bourbon became a unique product of the United States. The story really begins after World War II. The world is in disarray and trade is trying to make a comeback all over the place. And places like Argentina, Great Britain, uh, Spain, they were all very reluctant to import bourbon. And in fact, they would put a significant amount of tariffs on them, or they would put a maximum amount that could be allowed in the country at any one time. It was very strange. It was very strange how they were operating in a post-World War II environment. And a lot of times, these trade ambassadors would tell uh, the American the American trade people that there was nothing unique about bourbon. When, in fact, in the 1940s and 1950s, there was bourbon being distilled, uh, labeled, and sold from Canada and Mexico and probably a couple other places that, we, that aren't really well known. There was one brand in particular that moved its facilities from Kentucky to uh, Juarez, Mexico, and started making Mexican bourbon during Prohibition and was bootlegging it back in the States and even got a, a, a right to sell it as a medicinal import into the United States. That was from Waterfield and Fraser. And in fact, Cave's Manian from Rabbit Hole is coming out with a brand that's kind of dedicated a little bit to that history uh, very soon. It's called uh, the Mary Dowling brand. Uh, but anyway... So they were having these meetings with uh, contingencies around the world, and they basically came to the resolution in, here in the United States that they had to pursue what uh, cognac did in France, what Canadian whiskey did, what Scotch did, Irish whiskey, and that was to get an official designation to become a unique product of the United States. However, it was not until JFK became president that there was any real like teeth to that effort. There was a lot of lobbying and a lot of uh, jockeying to get themselves uh, in front of Congress to get make this a part of the conversation. But we are still, as a country, in the 1950s, you know, maybe you know, 15, 17 years removed from uh, prohibition, and there's still very much a prohibition mindset. Uh, bourbon doesn't have the political capital that it does today, and people really were not that interested in advancing a bourbon uh, agenda. However, uh, President uh, Kennedy comes into office, and he makes trade expansion a very important detail of his uh, of of his presidency, and one of the things that he mentioned upon signing the uh, Trade Expansion Act, our industry, our agriculture, our mining will benefit from the increased export opportunities as other na nations agree to lower their tariffs. Increased exports and imports will benefit our ports, steamship lines, and airlines as they handle an increased amount of trade. Lowering our tariffs will provide an increased flow of goods for the American consumer. So that happens in 1962. JFK, is, of course, is assassinated, and he is really the beginning of Bourbon having a political way to maneuver into having this des you know, special designation. And so it, become, it gets through a committee in 1963, and it's on the floor in 1964. There was an effort to have bourbon to become a unique product of the United States on April 30th, 1964. And in their, in their logical rationale, they claimed this was the day that Elijah Craig had invented bourbon, uh, April 30th, 1789. Of course, you know, 
this is when the Elijah Craig legend is really built up. It was really built up in the 50s and early 60s to try and get people to uh, really buy into bourbon being a special American product. And uh, I don't think it's any coincidence that there was a tie to George Washington with that with that plea as well. However, you remember I mentioned that Mexican distillery? Well, that Mexican distillery was very much against bourbon becoming a unique product of the United States. And in fact, they had a congressman, they had a congressman's ear, Congressman John Lindsay. So John Lindsay was a very important congressman and uh, really is trying to put a pause on bourbon becoming a unique product of the United States. Congressman Lindsay actually pleaded with his his fellow congressman that this cannot happen, that it would take away uh, money from poor old ladies in in who lived in New York. So there were people in New York who owned this distillery in Mexico, and he was making all of these efforts to block bourbon becoming a unique product of the United States because the interest of this Mexican bourbon were actually in his backyard. So these ladies who lived in New York were trying to stop bourbon from becoming a special product to here, to the United States. Now, that did not play very well, but Congressman Lindsay managed to actually block, he actually managed to block it from becoming a unique product on April 30th. And so it was tabled. He had enough swing and enough power that he was able to table bourbon becoming a special product of our fine country. And when it passed on this day in 1964, uh, Congressman Lindsay had this to say. And you can actually find this passage in my book on page 173. If you don't have my book, you can go to uh, Google Books or someplace like that that has it. This is what he, he basically read this aloud on the congressional floor when this passed. Is there a man with soul so dead who never to himself has said, this is my own, my native bourbon? So I'm pretty sure that is a rip off of uh, Sir Walter Scott. Uh, but as the as the uh, congressional floor pleaded, you know, was praised with joy after it had passed, Congressman Lindsay is reported to have not have neither voted nor said anything after his little uh, poem. But that uh, that kind of concluded it you know bourbon became a unique product of the united states in 1964 right after that and after that like anybody who had a free trade free trade agreement with us or were in negotiations with us on a free trade agreement had to adhere to our terms and standards of what is bourbon uh, mexico had to stop making bourbon uh, canada had to uh, basically by this point canada had not really been making bourbon anyway but all countries who were pursuing bourbon or thinking about it, basically this was a warning shot of like, you know, don't do it. Uh, we will come after you. Even if there was not a free trade agreement with us, there are other means that the U.S. government could go after them, you know, whether the world courts or whatever. However, this is a time where bourbon begins to lose its luster. You know, so vodka's vodka and the rise of white spirits would end up being the end of bourbon's reign and nobody really wanted to make bourbon anyway outside of a handful in Kentucky in the late 1960s and early 70s. So 1964 was a very very special year um, in uh, in bourbon. There are a couple things to point out. Now the actual uh, declaration which I'm going to post right here uh, does not say America's spirit or America's native spirit. You will see that used in uh, media reference uh, quite frequently, but it is not actually in the resolution. It is, however, used in the congressional testimony and the effort to pass it. So while well, some people, you know, get a little um, get a little upset about that and that it's not actually called America's spirit. Uh, I, I tend to not get as and, and they have every right to because it is not in the it's not in the declaration. I, I tend to be a little bit more like eh, it was used in the promotion of making it a declaration. So I, I can live with it. What I cannot live with, however, 
is how this day has seemed to be forgotten by the distillers. And instead, uh, the fake internet holiday, June 14th, is celebrated in September uh, Heritage Month, which was really created to celebrate the Kentucky Bourbon Festival and all the festivities in September. You know, all of those things are celebrated. That's absolutely fine. But I just feel like we should pay homage to uh, May 4th a little bit more because May without May 4th, you know, bourbon is not as special as we, you know, think it should be. And really, the it, it does begin with, with JFK, and JFK does not get a lot of recognition in the bourbon industry, and I think he should. Uh, that being said, why we probably don't celebrate May 4th, and it's going to sound silly, but it bumps up right against the Kentucky Derby. And if you're in Kentucky, you know how exhausting the Kentucky Derby is if if you are in the bourbon industry, like we are constantly, constantly doing something. And so if we were celebrating National Bourbon Day or uh, Bourbon Declaration Day, whatever you want to call it, or America Spirit Day, you know, that's just one more thing to do. And so there's only so many of us to be able to go and uh, celebrate something. So I imagine the distillers were were probably looking at uh, on May 4th and was like, ooh, Ooh, as bourbon was on the rise, like, yeah, I got to entertain, you know, 50 distributors from all over the country at my house. I don't want to have to do one other thing. But at any rate, uh, that is why uh, Bourbon Heritage Month or Bourbon Declaration Day is May 4th, 1964. Thank you for tuning in. If you want to check out more history, I get I get into a, a lot deeper histories uh, in uh, Club Marzipan. And uh, you can find a link for that in the description. But uh, thank you for tuning in. Lots of reviews on this channel. Click subscribe if you want to learn more uh, about whiskey and what I like to taste uh, and the history around it. And if you go a little deeper dive, a little bit more content and access to my barrel picks, click uh, on uh, Club Marzipan, which you will find in the description. And lastly, if you want to learn more about history, check out my book, Bourbon. That's going to do it, folks. Be safe out there. And remember, vodka sucks in part because it knocked bourbon off its pedestal in the 1960s. Cheers.